Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode is number 457. We have special guest Grant on. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. Now, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? He's the deadpan humor. Over okay, six yeah, people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. Tell us if you have seen you absolute fools. Then you'll be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, I got my Spidermans. Mm, you did. It would seem like late to some people, but it's actually just the correct way to do it if you aren't breaking street dates. So, mm. um,. I got it from cool stuff, I guess. That's, oh, that's yeah. my plug there. Because they actually ship it when you're supposed yeah. to and not do weird pre-sales and then yeah. not fulfill those pre-sales. Yeah, it's not like they're, then... they're not pre-sailing something, <laughs> not able to have the thing, and then, you know, yeah. You know, they they sell what they have when they have it, the correct dates. That's a wild concept. It's crazy, honestly. I I've, don't know I've how to fathom it. I've never heard of a hero clicks place that would actually do that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, you just heard his voice, ladies and gentlemen. We got Grant Hollingshead in the studio, kind of. What's going on, Grant? You know, I'm living another day. Uh, every day is another dollar, so. Oh, perfect. Can't complain. <laughs> All right. So, Grant chose to be on the podcast. He got whatever place on um, the Bradcast tournament that happened a few weeks ago, and the way back up, I assume. Definitely on the way down. Uh, on the way back up, no, he chose... No, definitely on the way down. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So, Grant chose the prizing. That was... It was drafted prizing, and he chose to be on the podcast. So, Grant, welcome to the show. We usually do a, a What Made Us Happy. We're going to skip that this week, because obviously what made you happy is being on the Dial H for Heroes podcast, and so oh, we don't need to get into it. You know it. And, and what yep. made us you happy is having you here. Greg. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That so, is so kind of me. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and start with the interview and get right into it. So, Grant, when did you start playing Hero Clicks? What set got you into the game? Um. Well... Kind of messed around with Hero Clicks with the Mighty Thor, but then I actually got into actually playing with a group and everyone around uh, Avengers Infinity. So that's 2017 18. Okay, right on. Yeah. Avengers Infinity is pretty solid set to. I mean, Mighty Thor was definitely a good time to get in. Oh, it was a great set. Best time to get in at that point. Yeah. But, uh, what are some of your favorite pieces to use? Or favorite combos, Currently? I guess you might use. Oh, man. Um,. It's very hard. I I can't go wrong with a Shi'ar team. Oh, Emperor Gladiator just is just so good. They have insane <laughs> synergy. So is like Shi'ar your favorite team to play right now? I think so. Just, um, yeah. I think a lot of the new Spider-Man stuff is really cool. Um, like it's cool. It's experimental. I like the uh, the idea of a lot of the newer stuff, but it the Shi'ar team just has such a good synergy with it that I can't go wrong with it. <laughs> Are you experimenting with anything out of Spider-Man right now? I mean, or just um, the uh, overall the the wall crawler trait. I'm trying to experiment with just because of how uh, versatile it is. We have an ongoing theory here at Dial H that before they change a power, they kind of change it in like traits and special powers first, like mind control. But if, like back when it did feedback damage, you would get extra costly ones that said they don't take feedback damage. Um, and that's like a really old change now, but then like, similarly, there's other powers that have been changed just to do the thing that the special one did. I think wall crawler might be a predecessor to leap climb, just getting like that mm. effect. Yeah. We were, um, a lot of me and my friends were also kind of thinking that idea as well. Well, I'm glad I gave you that idea. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I gave you and your yeah. friends that idea. Great minds think alike, you know? <laughs> Gosh. Do you have a uh, favorite figure of all time? 
Goblin King from What If. Ew, gross. Ugh. Oh, I'm sorry. Ugh. Choose a different one. <laughs> Have a new, better, different okay, favorite. Okay, uh, my bad. Um, Unimine from The Mighty Thor. Ugh, <laughs> ugh. Wow. I thought we called Tristan. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I thought we called this Grant. Grant. This, not Tristan. This, what, not what Tristan. This? Okay. Unimines. Ugh. Well, if I Ugh. have to pick, you can't <laughs> let me choose my favorite character. I mean, like character. Unimine is your favorite, favorite character. character. Yeah, yeah, sure. Bro. I really oh, like Goblin bad. King from my, that my issue. He was Felix based. Faust. <laughs> Okay, I will actually accept Felix Faust as being a favorite character because he's actually an interesting villain, unlike Goblin King and Unimind, who just sort of show up in a handful of issues or like one more Goblin. Literally, no, one you, issue is Goblin no, King. It, okay, one comic is is Goblin King. Yeah, but Unimind does pop up in a lot of different comic series. Yeah, for a time. Has he been host. in a movie? No, not really. That was yeah, really I mean, sad. I was so yeah. I was hoping that he would just. There would be like a giant green, like Galactus, like cloud thing. Oh, oh gosh, not that necessarily. Yeah, but when we saw the the Empire chase, or not the Empire, but the Eternals chase, was like glowy what is it, Cersei? yellow Cersei yeah. or something. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's gonna yeah. be that. We're gonna yeah. have the Unimind. <laughs> you know, no, didn't happen. <laughs> no, that was a bummer. They yeah. even like make the Unimind and their little they didn't, whoever it was that made the movie didn't even play it at full points because they only had like three blue flames. Yeah, dude, they got dusted by. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, all right, Grant. What kind of player are you? Do you think a meta player, casual player, a little bit of both, a little bit of neither? Um. Well, I hate the competitive scene, but it's always a good community to hop into. So I'd have to say a little bit of both. What do you hate about the competitive scene? The um, people? Is it the people? Is it? Is it, it us? It's more. It's just. It's more. Oh yeah, it's colder. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm the most competitive player I know. So <laughs> no, I'm clearly... it's the people who make these meta teams, and this has been happening since ever since I joined. But people who try to make meta teams where um, the other person just cannot play the game, and it's very much against the spirit of the game. And I just, I don't care for it. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that that is like the worst. I don't know if you, and no knock against this guy, but if you played this team in the broadcast tournament, but he literally could turn one on a small map, uh, Green Lantern, Batman, Plasticity, a lot of a ton of your team, and then Rune Marker, your team. Oh, all yeah. like all at once, and it's like I guess I can't do anything. Yeah, cool. I guess I'll power action move. And like, then normal, try to get a six on breakaway. Move? Yeah, yeah, it sucks. Um, it's like that's <laughs> I not did fun. Into those games, but yeah. yeah, things like that. It's just. I agree with you though. I think someone whose entire thing is just like like a vulture. I kill all your team and like turn one. There's no back and forth. There's no I attack you, you attack me. A little bit of you know ebb and flow to a battle, and it's just like all right, you're done. Yeah, Game shredders. Over shredders to like a much lesser extent but like i'd say less extent yeah but like not having to right. like make yeah. attacks or anything mm. like obviously much lesser because you could actually fight them but like you remember how hard it was to ko a mini shredder mini shredder oh yeah it was like impossible Dude, like absolutely it was real rough all right what is your favorite format to play since if you could pick if it was your birthday Oh, I would just try to make everyone cry with the Golden Age. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. What's your go-to? It's, what's your Golden Age go-to it, for your... It has to have something with old Felix Faust because oh, a lot of Okay, so now wait a second. Say, <laughs> yeah, when you, you said Felix, I thought you meant when people D20. say Golden Age, they don't actually put down the restrictions. It's true. So you just said you disliked people people that said you can't play the game, <laughs> and Felix Faust quite literally has an ability basically that says you can't play the game so explain that thinking because i don't I'm, I'm not getting it grant i'm not getting it yet <laughs> so i'm not a good player <laughs> i don't actually completely destroy your teams when i roll um and my luck is extremely bad so that's how my felix plays go okay. i really You're, thought I you would say like shut people down i thought you would say your favorite format was like double prime or something no, it's actually a, a really custom one that my friend Tristan made. It's called Hulk Mania. <laughs> Do you play it the is card? The worst thing that? I've ever seen in my entire life. It's great. What is Hulk Mania? Or can you say, or is it top secret? Oh well, Lucas doesn't want me to 
disclose this information, so I probably won't. <laughs> okay. Okay. We should have had Grant sign an NDA before he got on and yeah, oh, told us about Hulk Mania. Uh, do you want to shout out your venue? You kind of mentioned bits and pieces of it, and we all know, but just for the people at home, you want to shout out your venue? Yeah, um, I play in Sioux Falls, South Dakota at Rainbow Comics. Right on. What's your favorite thing about playing at Rainbow Comics? Um, the environment there is really welcoming. Um, hmm. People who are there are very respectful to you playing the game. You don't get any type of nasty look for playing a a, a children's looking game um, while just kind of enjoying yourself with. Oh, the people you mean you mean like the other patrons that aren't HeroClix players? Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The HeroClix players themselves are awful there. Oh, geez. So it's terrible. It's like all the Phoenix Nest. <laughs> <laughs> It quite literally is at least three of the uh, Phoenix Nests. So. Maybe four. I don't remember. Is there a fourth uh, one? There? I don't... I, I think uh, four the f- four or five of them pop in every once in a while, but hmm. it's usually just the three. Yeah, the three. The last few times I've went to Rainbow, somebody has brought some form of... I think it's been actually an Alex each time. He's brought, like, cookies or banana bread yeah, or eater. muffins yep. yep is that also yep. a perk of playing at rainbow yeah so um mater's wife she's really good at cooking food and baking and she just brings in the best just cuisine it's great cuisine, Ooh. cuisine. hey guys just everyone remember it's a 300 point lasagna night so <laughs> jeez <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, what's the best cuisine that Mater's wife has brought in? I don't. I don't want to dox her, so I'm not going to say her name. <laughs> but right. Um, on our way to Worlds, she packed us um, these mini muffins of banana bread with chocolate chips in them. Mm. And I think I I ate like two bags of them. Grant, what? Wow. <laughs> like I destroyed. <laughs> How many bags did she give you? Uh, I think it was like two bags and a couple of Tupperware full of stuff. Oh, so you ate the two bags? Okay. Yeah, yeah because the two no bags one that were provided. Them. Wow. No one, no one was eating them, and I kept asking Mater, like, "Hey, man, can I have some of these?" <laughs> Every time he's like, "Yeah, please just eat them." So, so would you I say did. when you got to Worlds, if say someone were to have given you a shirt, maybe it wouldn't have fit, so you wouldn't have needed it anyhow? Hmm. Hmm. No, um, no. I think I, I want. I want the shirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Then finally, uh, we've got a barrage of what would you makes. So this started off with the OG prizing from Worlds. That is, if you were to win Worlds someday, what figure would you design? Yeah. So uh, I'm guessing you both seen the animated uh, Spider-Man movie with Miles Morales. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a scene in there where Peter Parker sits in a bathtub and he cries <laughs> while he's being poured on with, with uh, by the shower. That, that I really want that as a hero click. Iconic clicks. Okay, yeah, we got we got a new iconics. He has the trait where <laughs> and everything's fine, and then it cuts to him. It's not exactly. Wolverine in the bed. <laughs> it's Spider Man in the bathtub. Jeez. That's what was that Peter B. Parker, whoever. That's Peter yeah. B. That is Peter, Peter B. B. <laughs> That's all, what. Do you know what ability he would have? What, what's his? What does um, Spider-Man crying in the bathtub look like on the Hero well, Clicks he, board? He would have. He would have the swim ability for sure. Oh yeah. Um, I think he he would have a movement speed of zero. Okay. With and swim, he would just be like people would move him around and carry him, and then his like trait would be like within range. Um, people are like sad, so they'll get like uh, in capped. Um, they no matter like no matter of like line of fire, he can try to in cap them. Mm. What if uh, he has a sad aura, just energy about right. him? What if it's like right. like no one wants to see Peter. Just Every turn, he can either place a square of water terrain, or he can place a square, or he can place water terrain in every adjacent square next to a square of one of his water terrains. So he just slowly like floods the map from oh, his gosh. tub, 
and like he can only, he only be, be in like the starting I mean, area make him like a mobile but like from the starting area like sad peter parker just like floods the map <laughs> with his bathtub tears jeez the bathtub tears yeah that would be so Gosh. good i think there's a lot you can do with it i like both those i like i like those abilities <laughs> <laughs> those are really good super senses but only succeeds on a one Ooh, sad spidey <laughs> yeah that'd be so funny <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. I love that. All right. Uh, so we got your world's figure. So let's say Huntington's. Uh, you can make a bystander and legacy card. What What would you choose for the legacy card? Um, Man, that's hard. I think Alex Wilder deserves a legacy. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, what would he do different? What would What could Alex Wilder do? Um, Honestly, I don't. I don't feel like they should change him. I think he would just be a really, like, just nice, decent piece to have back in modern. Okay. I mean, he's a really cool piece. Uh, your opponent chooses one you can't use and all that. It's, it's a really unique ability. We and haven't had a traitor, traitor, traitor effect in a long time. Like, I think it was... Did we have a traitor in War of the Realms? I feel like I we th- might have had one, but... I I honestly, remember. I thought I we had a traitor mechanic so. in Avengers Forever, but I think I'm wrong. That could be. I don't know when the last time we had a traitor effect. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Following off of Huntington's getting a legacy card, if you could design a single bystander, what would it be? And would it be the car? Car can't Uh. be a bystander. (laughs) It's doing the car injustice. You just just do Um, the last click. What click? Oh, jeez. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I would do probably Lucas. Uh, I'd probably do Lucas. Why? <laughs> Why? His powers would just be like teaching you hero clicks. Okay. You can so only per- play this bystander in 300 modern. And stuff like that. <laughs> if the format yeah, is anything else. Modern. Yeah, anything but 300 modern. Or 300 silver, but you instantly KO the bystander if there's no tri sentinel on your team. Right. And that's or how it works. I feel like he would be a um, leadership if you roll if you succeed on leadership instead spawn in a tricentral on their last click. Jeez, that would be insane. This should be like a if he rolls a six on leadership, no other effect. You don't get plus one action, <laughs> then you get a trice because a tricentral for free. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Tri- well, you score tricentral points for sure oh yeah oh oh how could i forget you kill it you score it's yeah, points exactly. yeah, yeah. You, you so if you just added points. a free 30 point retaliator with pulse wave it generates it so it doesn't take up a sideline spot oh that's on, balanced it's, it's, yeah that's real Lucas. balanced that's how you balance it <laughs> only if when lucas is ko'd all by st- all friendly tri sentinels are also ko'd map wide effect like, um, all characters with the kid keyword get a plus one attack and damage <laughs> or i think another funny thing would be like a mama bird as the trait and it's him bringing in um dark phoenixes mm, okay. there you go and he also throws up in your mouth to feed you <laughs> <laughs> exactly That's good. i thought you were just gonna like uh you just call it like van life and it'd be like passenger eight or oh, passenger geez. no sorry passenger six yeah I saw he can only no, hold seven. He has seven, seven people in his yeah. car. Seven, so some, yeah, him plus six, so it's seven, right? <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Yeah, the Phoenix, be, Phoenix van doesn't hmm. carry as much as it used to. No, no, then it should be able to carry more since I'm not in the Phoenix van. I take up like three or four people's <laughs> spots, you Just know, lay down all the, the stuff I bring. Yeah. There was a time where that was true. When I bought all those hero clicks, I did take up like a ton of space. <laughs> like three yeah, tons. that's true. Yeah. We went there, and the trunk was already full. And then yep. you just decided to get a million more things. So yep. the entire yeah. car was a little bit more full. I like shopping. It's so fun. I mean, you can't pass <laughs> up a deal like that, though. No. You can't. No. All right, Grant, well, might as well go over your team that you played in the broadcast events that got you here, the, the the winning team that got you on the Dial H for your quick show. So do you want to just yeah, run us down really quick? Team. Yeah, um, well, it's my favorite team that uh, we've disclosed already. Um, they're all from X-Men Rise and Fall. It is a Shi'ar keyword um, of... M- 
Prime Emperor Gladiator uh, at 100 points. Um, the Ken. The controversy, mm. but the Ken. That is con- um, Yikes, that is controversial. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty rough. Uh, Half Dial Deathbird, Half Dial mm. Emperor Vulcan, and then uh, Lerandra Naramani. Lalandra Naramani, the uh, other bird lady. Uh, Half Dial Emperor Vulcan, why? Just the. Uh, uh, so you trait? can fit everyone on there. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Uh, obviously, with the rules changes, Emperor Gladiator got a lot better. Did you? Did you that experience yep. that? Was that like? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, it, it's it's been a kind of game changing for a couple of those moves. I was gonna say, is that like was that uh, part of the reason why you played that specifically, or were you already gonna play it and you were just like, sweet, he got a boost? Well, I originally I was going to play the most hodgepodge trash I could f- just fling together, but then I figured out about the the new buff for him. So I was like, well, I'll I'll just play the tried and true and see what happens. All right, Lalandra, huh? Yeah. She's the only prop, I guess, besides an Emperor Gladiator. I don't see. Well, yeah, it's a prop, and um, so every single one of them has a trait to um, modify the Shear flags. Right. Yeah, she increases defense plus one. Defense by, defense uh, by one. Which, damage. Uh, so you didn't it, play any main um, force uh, Shi'ar soldiers, though? No. So, oh, okay. But I have six pieces that all generate them on leadership roles. What would so you see the like, average amount you generated? <laughs> like, you have six leadership roles. Was it typically at least one per turn? Um, average was probably one or two a turn. Nice. That's how it right. should be. Yeah. Technically, yeah. Mm-hmm. Six chances at a... Six at a five yeah. through six, yeah, yeah, one or two a turn. Okay, well, right on. Well, we got to know Grant, so let's go ahead and get into the rest of the show, shall we? So let's hit us up with some Heroclix news. All right, in this last week, we saw that monthly OP kit organized play is coming back. We got to see what two OP kits are going to be. So in the past, OP kits was usually just like three figures, one new sculpt, two old sculpts, and then every figure had a new dial. So that's still true. But then in these kits, they're also going to have one extra thing since Heroclix has added cards and whatnot. So we got a mystery card and we have a legacy card in each of these respectively. So these are really cool. Uh, Simeon, want to give us the rundown of the first OP kit here? Yeah. So the first one is, uh, I guess it's called it's called the Moon Knight Monthly Organized Play Kit. So obviously Moon Knight was a Disney plus show. Still is technically. It's still up there. Um, and so they're kind of cashing in on like that, like franchise, I guess. I mean, they've been making Moon Knight since way before I ever thought he would get a show or movie. That's fair. But uh, the kit is going to have a Moon Knight figure with new dial. I can't remember where this sculpt is from. It's not the latest one. Though. No, it's War of the Realms. Okay, that's War Pretty of the sure. Realms. He does look. I think they might be like painting it different because he does look like he has red eyes, at least in the mm. digital rendering. Uh, it's going to have a Black Knight, also probably from War of the Realms. I assume so, yeah. Yeah. And That'd then a, yeah. the new figure, so those both have new dials, but the new figure is going to be Harrow, which is Moon Knight's adversary, I guess, Who's looks like a guy that's just trying to get through the airport. He's just... Yeah. <laughs> he's just Dude got like a suitcase. A scowl on his face, holding a suitcase, very angry. Um, and then on top of all that... It's going to come with a mystery card that is Search for Amit's Tomb Mystery. So we don't know what any of these things do yet, but uh, obviously we know what mystery cards do. It's probably going to be something along the line of like Detective Keyword or maybe um, Marvel Knights. I don't know. It's going to do something with the characters that it comes with, obviously. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, Harrow, for those that don't know, that was the main villain of the Moon Knight TV show. This one looks comic accurate and therefore 100 percent completely different uh way more uh <laughs> scottish irish uh red-headed yeah. than the other guy and you then said this big was like bright red shirt banshee, no cane. banshee like i got like stuck in the savage land and then was coming back like via a like economy flight that's yeah. what he looks like this looks like me. sean cassidy oh. yeah Lion spirit airlines <laughs> Yeah, I think the Black Knight figure is the only one out of 
in the Moon Knight set where I'm just like, I haven't read Moon Knight recently, so I don't know if him and Black Knight team up, but it kind of feels like we just have Black Knight because his second name is Knight. Like his name ends with Knight, so it's kind of <laughs> feels like that's why he's there. But that's what the the Amit's Tomb mystery will be is uh, if the why character's is... name includes the word Knight. Knight. Perfect. They can, yeah. I can see a mystical keyword going around there too. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, mystical Knight deity, some mystical, and then uh, yeah. Grant, do you have a favorite like OP kit that's come out in the past where it was like these three figures? I guess. They probably they stopped that I guess in 2020, 20, so like shortly after you stopped started playing. I mean, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I guess around your time there was like the Cookie Martian Manhunter and oh, Batman. Yeah. And there was like the three Green yeah. Lanterns and a handful of other stuff. So are you pretty excited to have like prizing come back for like weekly play for monthly organized play? Uh yeah, I I love um, doing a lot of the OP stuff and organized play uh, the organized play stuff. Right on. Uh, so the second one. Oh yeah, Silvermane. I forgot about Silvermane who generates <laughs> Silvermane's head. Oh so, God, no. So the second one is going to be Fantastic Four, and that's going to give us Human Torch, Mister Fantastic, and the Thing. The Thing is the new figure, and this is Infinity Thing from the Avengers Forever storyline. So it's pretty cool. He's like got all the weird Infinity Gems kind of on his stone body and. Just randomly, I guess. So he was a powerhouse in Avengers Forever and the storyline. So it's kind of cool to see, you know, we're kind of in the midst of Avengers Forever in comics right now. And we already got an Avengers Forever set. And that set only had like a handful of people from Avengers Forever. So it's cool to see it get filled out this way. Is he missing a gem? There's reality, uh, space, soul, time, power. One, two, three, four. Mind. Five? One, two, Ooh, this three, would be six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. How many comic think... turns does it take to figure out what the chances uh, are? I mean, he has like red, but then the rest of his body is like pinkish red. Yeah. Is that a the last gem? I guess <laughs> the last gem is just the entire rest of his yeah. body. Maybe. <laughs> no, I don't freaking know. Uh, but he he goes clobbering, and then he just like kills. He's like says like one word. He's just clobbering, and then, and then he just snaps. Fa- yeah. Yeah turns into dust so he should be pretty powerful <laughs> like he should be pretty sick so i'm excited to see what he does and then this also comes with an invisible woman legacy card so in case you didn't already have a full set of the fantastic four well they're going to rotate at least so here's going to be our first modern ver- well I, that's a lie empire you get a full set of the fantastic four but mm-hmm. whatever uh you'll get another full set of the fantastic four so i'm curious what invisible woman is getting a legacy card it is I her really... second legacy so yeah uh the first one being from the captain america set yeah so, the invisible shield yeah a few people have said like the the i mean obviously there's a lot less fantastic four to choose from in recent years because they hadn't been clicked until the most recent two sets so it's either from one of those two sets one of the random sets after that, like where they popped up, or it's real old. Like, real old. I think the Invisible Woman I want them to choose is the Hockey Puck one from, like, I don't know if it was Infinity Challenge or Fantastic Forces, but there is, like, an Invisible Woman who has just no sculpt on the base. Because she's invisible. Ooh. Uh, yes. You know, like, that's the gimmick. What if it's secretly John Cena convention exclusive? Oh, that'd be so awesome. That'd be so cool. It wouldn't make yeah, sense, but <laughs> let's see. There's Fantastic Four. So before Either. the Captain America, I don't think they're picking the LE from Chaos War because mm-hmm. um, they all four of them were. Uh, I think they'd do the whole set of them if they were going to do that. Um, there's Fantastic Forces, Rookie, Veteran, and uh, Experienced. Ones. Oh, there it is. Critical Mass. Critical Mass. Yeah. Uh, they really liked their blank dials in Critical Mass. There's a lot of them. Most of them were event dials like, or something. But... Ant Man and Invisible Woman and a few other. Ooh, we could get. Well, it's not Invisible Ooh. Girl, but it could be the veteran Invisible mm. Woman from Clobber in Time. That'd That's cool. probably what it is. A 19 top dial? Traded defend? Probably. That Pretty sounds... easy to defend, though, on her dial. Give her something else. Oh. Uh, Maybe free choose defense power she can use <laughs> yeah, somewhere on her dial. So on her dial. Yeah. Defend. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's fair. Um, free. She can copy the, or not free, but she can just copy any adjacent character's attack value because she has garbage attack values. 
What is she doing, though? She's got one damage most of her time. <laughs> that's a terrible figure. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically... Is that it for news? That's basically it for news. Oh, okay, They're really... Uh, um, obviously, like there's a few events coming up. IPF is the first one that I care about. I'm, maybe there's one before that, but it's the first one I care about. Uh, that's going to be... Yeah, six days. So as of hearing this, uh, probably less, but March 26th, I believe, or 25th, is the cutoff date to have your build uh, sent in, your build sent in for the 300-point modern. It's using uh, Spider-Man as legal, and the rules are in effect, obviously. Um, But yeah, that's going to be in the broadcast Discord. So that is the only like news outside of this little tidbit that we had. That I can think of. Grant, are you playing in the International Player Foundation tournament on Brad Boyle's broadcast Discord? Ooh. Well, uh, if I'm open for the date, I'm, I'll send in a character sheet, but I don't know if I'll actually be able to make it. But I'll try. Hang on. We have some breaking news. <laughs> yeah. Well, good, Grant, but yeah, Simeon, geez. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we don't normally do impromptu Thread Dead Redemptions, but... In Heroclix players and collectors around the world, seven minutes ago, we have a post that says, Hey guys, I was looking into what character I would make if I ever won Worlds. I'm looking for honest feedback on this, as I don't want WizKids to just say no. I know that it needs some small tweaks, but I don't know what they could be changed. Um, the character's name, it's limited edition, number 420 in the set. It's called The Car, real name Various. Uh, I would list the key na- or the keywords, but there's just too many to list uh range is 25 with quadruple lightning bolts and it's 10 points um wild i i don't know how WizKids could say no to this i think this is the best thing i've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> oh jeez i can't believe he publicly posted the car bro you're posting the car in front of the hose you can't do this just get dude you're gonna scare people <laughs> we have any good comments out of this uh, Doctor, Do- no, okay, Doctor whatever. Doom. That doesn't say doesn't mean anything. Random stat generator, kinda. Yeah. This is a lot to handle. This is a. I, I don't know. I feel like. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this character is a little. I want to say it's an easy ten points to to score. I feel like yeah. it needs to be boosted yeah, up. A yeah, bit. you know what? I think you're right. I think if you consider knockback damage being a thing, the cowboy boots are just gonna rip through the car yep. so fast. Yeah. That whole top line, just pretend like it doesn't exist, because you're Basically. instantly going to hit that first stop click, yeah. uh, which is only stop impervious super senses invincible shape change, uh, and the, the this character can't be countered, um, which is old <laughs> old text, but obviously that would be cleaned up in development. Yeah. Um, but that four defense on that first stop click, I don't know. Okay, right. You, you right. might say, sure, he's got a 30 attack and 40 damage <laughs> that he can split four ways, but I don't know if that's... What's his attack value there? Um, support, only, support is free. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, okay, that's that's fine. Attack power, yeah, yeah. So you could power action support as free. You could power support and then support is yeah. free, yeah. Or you could just yep. attack for the thirty know. attack for forty damage. There's so many rollouts nowadays. That's true. Like, you're just not guaranteed to hit, you know. Yeah. When this character damages an opposing character, KO that character. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, hypersonic speed, charge, but don't have speed. <laughs> Both hypersonic and charge don't have speed with a 50 printed speed on that first stop click. Um, he doesn't go below a 30 speed, so this is, a, this is a card that's breaking speed limits. He is crossing the map both ways twice and then attacking you. Man. Flight, flurry, but make four attacks instead of two. Leap, climb, and of course, plasticity. Uh, I love when a character has flight and leap, climb. I find that very necessary. Uh, We're not going to get into the the three traits that he has, but um, I think, yeah, I do think for 10 points you could do better. Uh, I think this, whoever posted this needs to shoot a little higher when it comes to designing a figure. Yeah, just overall... If you're going to take creative liberty with, you know, a character as iconic as the car, it's a real bummer dial. It's a real letdown. You yeah. Know? You... <laughs> right? Jeez. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the best part. Um, it's tiny. Yeah. It's uh, tiny. Team symbol, it dolphin tiny. symbol. That's the wheel, of the course. Dolphin the dolphin transport oh, dolphin. symbol. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. So not only does it get hypersonic 
bottom dial, hypersonic with full speed mm. charge. Man, the minus two attack. It also stuff. has a minus two attack if you choose to use hypersonic <laughs> via that ability. Jeez. So there's <laughs> you you just can't outwit its hypersonic. Oh my god! I mean, it already says you can't be you can't, yeah, be countered, can't be countered, but. Uh, even if you could find a way to counter it, you couldn't counter it because it's got redundancy built in. You try and get rid of its flight, well, it's got leap climb too. I, I like this post. I think whoever did this, they thought of everything. There's, I think if Whiskits doesn't get them on the design team and we don't see a car in Wheels of Vengeance, in Wheels of Vengeance, yeah. then I, don't know. I genuinely don't know what to think. Yeah. Yeah. So, fantastic. Shall we dip into the... The show, the the toughest hero clicks game show that is yet again sweeping the nation. People everywhere, hero clicks players everywhere, shake and shiver when they hear the name. Bad Samaritan. I'm real sorry about what you uh, you know. Maybe I'll keep my eye out for another one. I don't want no pity. Just treat me equal and no, nobody's taking nothing from me ever again. It's been sweeping the nation. You'd think the nation would be clean, but this is a very dirty nation. So oh, it is. This, this game sweeps it A lot of nooks and crannies to try to get into. Yeah. Sometimes we let it go for a while. We, we It gets a little dirty. We do forget to sweep the nation, and but we then, don't play Bad Sam yeah, for a while. Back, a little spring cleaning. Yep. That's true. First day of spring. Merry I, spring, Miss I, everybody. I don't think Grant has ever listened to the podcast before, so I don't know if he knows the rules to Bad Oh, he, you're right. He may not know the rules to Bad Samaritan. Well, for <laughs> Grant true. and any listeners at home that may not know the rules, Bad Samaritan is a Heroclix guessing game where I choose four Heroclix figures, three from Modern Age, and then one from Golden Age, and we each take turns trying to guess who the figure is going to be. So, round one, I'll choose the first figure. They will get a clue. So Simeon and Grants will be on the guessing team. They will each get a random clue from random dinner. Based on that one clue, they have to guess who the figure is going to be. Now they get three chances at this. So if they don't get it in the first round, they'll get another clue and then they'll get another guess. All right. If they don't get it the second round, they'll get a third and final clue, a third and final guess each. And then if they don't get it after that, then I will get a point. If they get it before that, they will get a point and so on and so forth. So there's three figures. So that way... If it's dead even, we have a fourth figure tiebreaker, but the fourth figure is Golden Age, so it can be anywhere from Not Modern to Infinity Challenge, and then the clues are slightly different for Golden Age. And if you want to guess at home after I give Grant and Simeon the clue, you can go ahead, pause the podcast, think of a guess, and then listen to their humming and hawing, trying to figure out who it might be, and listen to their guesses, and then see who got it right. But all right, we get 1 through 20 on a random number generator. So let's go ahead and see what the first clue first is. First clue is number 15. So 15 is opening defense power. Pretty simple. This character has invulnerability. Just printed on their dial. Uh, okay, I'm cheating. It's not the car. Okay. <sighs> T, you can't believe you just looked at the car's stats, I, I looked bro. at the car's is... dial real quick. No. Just to make sure. Uh, it, has, it has willpower, top dial. Not invulnerability. Uh, invulnerability is such a wonky power. That they can give it to pretty much anyone, and it kind it can kind of be made sense in a way. So, right, I'm gonna say someone like uh, Winter Soldier, because okay. yeah, I feel like he's had okay. like a big reducer at one point, and I'm staring at one right now. So, <laughs> not that Winter Soldier. He's no, not that. <laughs> not one. him. That's yeah. that guy does. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> the early version of Winter Soldier, he gets in vulnerability. Yeah. Grant, do you have a guess? I'm going to go Gladiator. Ooh, Gladiator. Mm -hmm. It is going to be neither of those. <laughs> Clue number two, figure number one. Clue number two is going to be 18. 18 is a free play. So I'm going to go ahead and read them all off for the people at home to know, for you guys to refresh, but I'm not going to read them off again. So the clues you can choose on a free play is significant appearance, point value, set, number of clicks, rarity and set number, a named keyword, a generic keyword, HC Realms comment, top dial stats, name of a special power, name of a trait, any special combat symbol slash their team ability, and then opening movement, attack, defense, or damage power. I'm preferential to HC Realms comment. I am also 
very right. much looking forward to. <laughs> so Realms when you choose HC Realms comment, I'll go ahead and read off the names of all the commenters, and you guys will tell me whose comment you want me to read. So uh, we have Space Titanium, Bionic Boy, Monkey Joe, Bounce 030, Monkey Joe again, Dat Homie, Silver Surfer, and of course, Goop. I was going to ask if Goop was there. Oh, uh, it's tough. Deciding between Monkey Joe and Goop. Is one of Monkey Joe's responses to Goop? Or like one of their comments, the response to Goop? No, his comments are just his weird to make it look brown. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at them and I was like, um, is yeah. this a reply? No, it's just him making his yeah, text brown. He's got to insert HTML text to make yeah, his color text come be. out colorful. Yeah. Uh, do you have a preference there, Grant? I would love to hear what Goop said. Okay. Jeez. Goop it is. Coldest takes on the internet. Goop. What did Goop have to say about this figure? 12 range giant with prob for only 30 points. I hate you, Goop. <laughs> <laughs> That's just incredible. If attacked, he gets angry and can blast back, although his de- death suffers. The mission point stuff is nice and all, but unless you're running some long battle royale, I doubt that will come into play. Invuln, 12 range, mm. prob, mm-hmm. giant, mm-hmm. Crazy. mission points. Mm-hmm. No. I. This has to be like the Watcher? Is that, is that your guess? <sighs> you got all that information. You're like, oh, hmm. wait, it's not Disney Plus. Maybe no, because he it's didn't, the Watcher. He didn't have. He might have had 12 range, but he didn't have mission points in Disney Plus. So I guess it could be Watu because he was mission points. I don't think he was giant, though. You used to play him all the time. What what giant has mission points? Man. And if he gets hit, he gets angry and like by, shoots back, something like that. So uh, 12 range with prob and invuln top dial. This is a wild character. Why why can't I think of this? I look at all the mission point stuff. I'm just I'm just going to say Uwatu. Okay, Grant's going to say Uwatu. All right. We, we still have one more clue, so I'll go with the Watcher just in case okay. I'm completely blanking. It is going to be Uwatu. <laughs> Grant, you got it. <laughs> Easy piece. Good job. From the Fantastic uh, Four set, right? From Future Foundation. Oh, yep. Future Foundation. You got okay. it. Wow. He is that angry giant that can punch yep. back, apparently. Thank you for Goop for just commenting exactly what i could see with my eyes literally just describing the, the exact dial that yep. is posted <laughs> wow so cool goop thanks bro uh so that is a point for grant as we move on to our second modern age figure all right first clue it's gonna be number 11 <laughs> this uh name of trait the name of this character's trait is magister of the shiar <laughs> empire <laughs> dang <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go with Emperor Vulcan. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> I'm also going to go with Emperor Vulcan. You can't You can't choose the same one. <laughs> oh, man. Big <laughs> sad. I'll say Larandra. Well, with Larandra. Okay, it is somehow ironically <laughs> neither of those. Whoa. No, really? <laughs> yeah, uh, who the fuck? Is it Deken? Is he the magister? Why don't you give me the second clue, huh? Oh, yeah, then you yeah, guys yeah. can guess. I was just going to keep guessing because that pretty Jeez. much narrows it down to like six <laughs> it, figures. It does. Uh, clue seven. Uh, generic keyword. He has the ruler. <laughs> or they <laughs> have the ruler keyword. <laughs> no way. No. The magister? Before, magistrar? Of before Shir- Simeon takes it, it's Deken. Okay. He okay. chose Deken. Um, Grant's going to say Deken, I guess. Whatever. We'll with, might not, we'll might not be with, him. Uh, uh, he went with Lalandra. I'll go with uh, Deathbird. Okay. No, yeah, it's Deken. No, Grant's right. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like I play this team a lot. Yeah. I really, I was really hoping somehow I could get it past you, and I was going to be like, well, I'm a fake fan, fake Shi'ar fan. Yeah. But you guys got, literally, like, anything other than the trait. The one clue that instantly <laughs> narrows it down. Uh, all right. That's crazy. All right. First yeah. clue for figure number three is going to be clue number six. Ooh, number six is a named keyword. This character doesn't have any named keywords, actually. So Whoa. It's a nothing clue. No named keywords. Someone with no named keywords. I will go with Molecule Man. 
Okay. He's got generics, right? Yeah. And Latveria. Does he? <laughs> I don't oh, know. Gosh. I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe. I know he's scientist, so you can put him on Latveria and Cosmic or whatever. Grant, what do you think? No named keywords. Named keywords. Um, uh, uh, NYPD officer. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably just police. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be neither of those. Wild. So, one more, or I guess second clue for the last figure in modern age. It's going to be 15 again. 15 is opening defense power. This character has super senses. No named keywords. Super senses. Well, it's not Spider-Man, because he would have Spider-Man family. And so would mm-hmm. 90% of the Marvel characters with Super Senses. They right. were, they're all Spider-Man family. Um, I'll go with Symbiote. Is that a is that a named keyword? Probably. Mm. Uh, mm. Codex used to be. I think well, Codex is, right? Uh, can't be, like pretty much anything from oh obviously nothing from the scooby gang because they all have a named keyword gosh uh i will say one. can't be a scroll can't be scroll spy none of that stuff because they all have scroll as a keyword man thinking of things without keywords is rough i will i will go with uh it can't even be a generic hand ninja because they have the hand I'll say mindless one. I don't know what they have on their dials because I haven't looked at them in recently. So yeah. no, I think mindless one have toughness, don't they? I'm almost positive like they that. do. It's like toughness and mystics. And that's their whole thing. I just can't think of anything. Well, okay. well let's see. Um... Oh wait, could be somebody uh... from Disney Plus, like one of the uh, spooktacular people, because they they have like celebrity and stuff, but they they weren't like a team. I mean, there, there's some things from the, like, Exosword Swap. Um, I guess uh, I'll go with Green Priestess. Okay, one for Green Priestess. Yeah. What was your guess? Oh, I, I spaced out. I said uh, Mindless One, even oh. though I know it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, those are actually both wrong, which is cool. All right, final clue is number 14. These are tough clues. Uh, opening... Attack power. This is uh, another nothing clue, guys. Sorry, but this person does not have an opening attack power. I hate to tell you. I'm going to say Wanda Maximoff. No, she has defend top down. Mm. Mm. No, I don't think that's right. And I also think she has a name cube. I will say Quicksilver. Okay. Yeah? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he uh, most likely he... has super senses. I don't know if he has a named keyword. Maybe Speedster. I don't. Is that named? Mm-hmm. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with Astral Doctor Strange. Ooh, that's a pretty good one. Don't it's not, because those are both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, No, the figure I was looking for is from the Wonder Woman 80th set, Strife. Wow, no named keywords, just... Bald, Deity beautiful and by herself. Yeah, just bald and beautiful. Uh, no, it's Deity and Mystical. She wow. she has a bunch of uh, traits and special powers that you guys could have gotten, but you kind of just got rough clues on that one. So uh, There is a theme. So before we get into Golden Age, we have Awatu, Deken, and Strife. And then Golden Age is 1 through 10. So maybe start thinking, what do you think is the theme with all these figures? Well, two of them are bald. At least two. Of them. Oh, there may also be some accidental themes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if Dekan is bald, but I know the other two are. No, nah, Dekan has a nice head of hair with a okay. beard. Okay. <laughs> okay. Glad you know. Yeah. Okay. Let's do Golden Age one through ten. This will be. I mean, Grant still has two points. So yeah. He's got zero points, so it's maybe I can tie Grant. I yeah. guess you could tie him. Yeah. I could. I oh, could just maybe. get on the board. I guess. True. Uh, first clue <laughs> for the Golden Age figure is clue number eight. Ah, uh, that is named and generic <laughs> keyword. <laughs> this character is a cosmic and an eternal. Mm. Oh, oh man! There's so many. There's. There's Cersei, there's Ajax, there's Makari, there's uh, 
Thanos. Uh, there's I think even the best uh, one to go with right off the bat is Uni Mind. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Kronos. Okay, all right. <laughs> nah, Grant got it. It's Uni Mind. Yeah, whatever. whatever. Uni Mind. Woo! <laughs> now three of them are bald. Yeah, I know. I didn't think of that either <laughs> at, at the end, and I was like, "Oh man, maybe maybe the theme is bald people." I don't know. <laughs> maybe Dickens got a history of hair loss in his family. All right, do you guys want to guess what the theme is? I think it could be clear, but it might not be as clear as I think. Oh, it could be clear. Shut up. Like, That's not clear. Don't effects. read into that. Hmm. Ah, hmm. uh, let's see. Ken is a ruler does stuff that makes people strife gives everyone like mystics <sighs> there's nothing like with the names that sticks out there's nothing with what they do that really sticks out um they haven't all been in movies i think i think only two of them if even that i, I don't know um i mean let's see Think Stripe was fine. Bizarro and dials. She, like, so I wonder if that like, is what you're trying venom. to do. Bizarro yeah. dials. Bizarro dials? Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking because at the end of each one of their dials, it's like different. Um, for some of them, they're better, and then yeah, Unimind's got uh, like hypersonic or hypersonic yeah. steel energy stop incredible on right. all of his stops. What a click! <laughs> yeah, Deken's just a mess at his top, so. Mess his top, thinking, not his bottom. No, his, his bottom's not a mess. Well, I was thinking through a a bizarro perspective. Oh, then yes, yeah, he would be yeah, a fucking his, mess. His last couple clicks are an absolute mess. Awesome. Uh, so, if there are no full guesses on the theme, I'll tell you the theme is the Rainbow Kids. That's the <laughs> theme. <laughs> All right, explain explain each one. Yep. Sad. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and explain it. Uh, so Tristan the one in studio, Unimind. Tristan is Unimind. Yeah, Sadly that is not correct. Bald in real life. Okay. Uh, Deken is Grant, okay. of course. Yeah. Uh, Awatu is Ethan because he is still Awatu Calder on Discord. Oh, that's right. Yep. And then Strife is now. This is maybe a deep cut, but Strife is Xion. Because this, because Strife was on the team that I beat him in 12 minutes. Uh, that game, <laughs> that game is from. Uh, so yeah, and it's it's only because of Strife that Guy Gardner died after he killed the rest of his team because he took that nine is, clicks of Mystics wow. damage. That is the deepest cut and yep. so mean. <laughs> yep, yep. Just to remind uh, yeah. Gian listening at home uh, of that brutal <laughs> defeat. Reminder: You got fifty points. I got three hundred. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jeez. I think it was a four hundred point game. Oh, actually, I think it was a very high point game. Ouch. But yeah. So yeah, that that's that's really the bad game. Sam theme. So, Grant, I want to say thank you so much for being on the podcast. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up here, and then we'll do listener questions after. But you know, is there anything you want to shout out? Anything you want to say while you're still on Dial H before we let you go? Yeah, I guess um, we'll shout out uh, Rainbow Comics here in Sioux Falls, and then we'll shout out the Phoenix Nest team that will be participating in, in a couple of upcoming events. Okay, right on. Well, thank you, Grant. Thanks for being on. We really appreciate it, my man. Yeah, no problem. All right. See you All later, right. man. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Grant. All my friends are out there in Hero Clicks land. Take it slow. All right, let's go ahead. Thanks for Grant for being on the show, of course. So let's go ahead and finish off the show with some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! All right, so listener questions up on the Discord. Izone Bill asks, can you please give me a primer on how superhero names work? Why are Superman, Spider-Man, and Iron Man written out differently? That's a good point. Yeah. Iron Man with a space between Iron and Man. Spider-Man, the hyphen, and Superman all run together. Not a lot of parentheses I don't know, superhero Bill. names. No, no, no. There no, are not like at all. maybe one. I don't know. Someone out there. Um, yeah, I don't know, Bill. Yeah. I wish I could give you a primer on how they work. Ka? Super na- Superman. Spider-Man. Spider-Dash-Man. Just- yeah, he's not. Yeah. I don't know. I definitely think that, like, Stan Lee at one point mentions why he hyphenated the name. It was probably, like, some, like, ye olde-timey, like, thing that made a lot of sense. Like, 
kids these days, they only read one word at a time. So if you put a big hyphen in the middle, they'll read spider. They'll get excited. It's a man too? Oh my. And <laughs> yeah. they'll buy the comic. That's how kids' brains work. I'm Stan Lee. Steve Ditko is just like, yeah. Excelsibur. I don't know. Gosh. Was, uh, we'll just pop on out of Alex's question here. Have you ever been recognized as Heroclix celebrities? No. I don't necessarily mean stopped on the street, but share if that actually happened. But like if you pop into a venue while you were traveling and someone playing there knows who you are. This happens to me locally. Okay. I mean, not okay. anymore, but it did happen to me locally a few times. Oh, yeah. Um, you've met Adam and Aaron. From, yeah. Yeah. They go to Dragon Slayer now. When I was still going to Krypton, when I was still able to like manage going there, uh, I, I believe it was Aaron, was like... Oh, like I've listened to your podcast, and I was like, "Wow, that's wild," but nice. like awesome. And uh, also Tyler, he not only in the Discord but also uh, in Bellevue. Um, I don't know if like chicken or egg. I don't remember if he had listened to us first or if I had mentioned it at oh, some point. And then he started. But like at some point, like yeah, he he mentioned that he had listened to the podcast, and I was like, "Wow, well, okay." Nice. Uh, more so at like at like worlds and stuff. Obviously, like the people that show up to world know who we are for the most part. Uh, I guess Adam Friedman doesn't know who I am, but you know, that's whatever. I don't know who that's he okay. Is. He's got a lot of Jack's pizzas he needs like, to eat. Uh, yeah, who is that? I don't know who he is, so why should he know who no. I am? But no, uh, <laughs> I can't remember the name of the guy, and I really wish I could. But we had an awesome interaction where he was doing like all these great callbacks that were like, like deep dial H lore. Like he brought up Budino, he brought oh, up like man. Uh, I can't remember. It was like something. Is that, that Dexter? He... Yeah. Yeah, dude, he was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He brought up. He brought up Budino and he brought up ch chicken parm. Yeah, the yeah. chicken parm <laughs> yeah. story. That's so what that it was. was great. Yeah. And I was like, oh my! I was like, I can't even remember the fact that we <laughs> uh, actually said that on podcast. Yeah, dude. So like, that's hilarious, and that was awesome. That was and, really good. Uh, I think he was like New York based. I can't remember. I don't remember sadly. But uh, yeah, that was like that was a really cool interaction where I like I actually felt. Like a real boy podcaster, <laughs> oh, where geez, I was like, yeah. even the weirdo stuff that we talk about that shouldn't be remembered, yeah, remember. like sticks with people, and they actually care sometimes. And so that was really cool. Uh, what was the rest of the question? Have you ever been recognized? Uh, okay, yeah, Pardon me. yeah. So the, yeah, uh, my answer, yes. Uh, I mean, obviously, we've both been recognized, right? But more so when we travel, I think. Oh yeah, it's one hundred percent when we travel. It's like. I remember the first time that I went to a like 300 modern, whatever WKO after like the year, right after I started doing the podcast and I, I wore this shirt, uh, that I had taken a, uh, t-shirt marker to, Oh yeah. it's a dial H for hero clicks <laughs> on it. Um, cause you know, whatever I was More very new H and I didn't know yeah, exactly yeah. how it looked. And Edward Sheldon was the first notice that he's like, rep the brand, no matter how how you do it and i was like thank you ed thank you a lot of respect <laughs> and then at rainbow the first person to ever walk up to me and said hey i enjoyed the podcast you want to guess who it was kevin no uh it was actually ian eggleston wow he was, yeah okay. he was like hey i just want to say big fan of the podcast and i was like oh hey thanks all so much right. for listening and like i didn't know ian at all at this point in time yeah. so like that was really wild that was really cool so yeah so those are like the two times i remember like the first times i ever got like recognized outside of just you yeah. know the people that then know me and then know I have a podcast and whatever, you know, but like totally in a, in a new place, didn't know if anyone was going to recognize me, you know, I will say didn't know. after our X of swords unboxing, I went into, uh, I went into the game shop in Bellevue yeah. and like at least three or four people were like, my bones are metal. metal. And oh, I was awesome. just like, I love it. <laughs> it's like, Oh man. Like, I wish I would think before I speak sometimes, but I don't. Oh, that was so, hilarious. Uh, yeah. My favorite quote was at PJ's event last year, someone walked to me and was like, wow, 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 yeah. and did that. That was really funny. So yeah. something like that is, is really <laughs> cool. So yeah. Yeah. No, we've had it a few times there, Alex. Matt Reed asks, Ian mentioned that you guys were running YouTube shorts. And I thought that was weird since I haven't ever seen one pop up. But after that conversation, they've been popping up all the time. What has Ian done to force this content on me? Speak it into existence, and it happens. Uh, when we Google were at Dragon Slayer just this last Sunday, I had mentioned to you that one of my favorite knives of all time is a Kalishnikov knife. Oh, yeah. With the button push. Yep. Within 10 minutes, I forgot to like mention this to you there, but within 10 minutes, I got an email for AK-47 knives. 
Really? I don't I don't know if it's the wow. same brand, but obviously a K forty seven Kalishnikov. Like Dude, yikes. I was like, that is some like spot on timing yeah, if I've geez. ever seen it. Or that was like literally just voice to like processing centers and they're yeah. like uh, send this kid the knives he doesn't know He's, where to find he them. said he lost his he needs yeah. to buy a new one he yeah. can't find where to where to buy them at quick send him an email Good lord that's terrifying uh, so yeah the the internet can be a very wild place yeah i mean you admitted that you hadn't seen our shorts the internet was like we'll fix that yeah we'll, You'll we'll see solve that problem right now yeah. say it out loud say it out loud again it'll happen luke 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 asks so we all remember sketch variants and what terrible feeling it was to pull a super rare that also had, like, no detail to its sculpt. Well, this is a Marvel Snap adjacent question. Collectability without impacting playability or the board. How would you feel if WizKids started doing alternate print styles for character cards? Say an entirely matte finish black and white card for Spider-Man Noir. Glow in the Dark Edition for Morbius. Ooh. Or even a hollow foil variant for the Hobgoblin. These would be for figures of every rarity slot appearing in random rare distribution on top of a regular style of a character card. These cards wouldn't impact the physical figure or play at all or play any differently at all, but just be something extra for collectors or enthusiasts of that particular card or character. What variants would WizKids have to make and what sort of distribution to make this not melt down the online community or to appeal to folks such as yourself? So here's the first thing. Would, um, distribution would have to be literally if you pull that character and that card, it comes with all variants. Otherwise, people would. Other people will lose their mind. If you have yeah. more than one variant for a card, and then you just have a random chance to pull any version of the variant with that figure, or maybe not with that figure, people will lose their minds. It's yeah. just like JLU. There's 100 freaking 25 team up cards. We talked about this. How that's like probably one of yeah. the hardest sets to collect. Because it's in, it's a pain, pain in the butt. You get three to five, maybe team up cards in a brick, and it's all you get. And there's ten freaking team up cards for every figure that has a team up card, and it's just yeah. a pain in the butt to do. So, in order to make it not be a pain in the butt, I think every figure needs to have one singular specific variant, and you maybe pull that variant. That way, there's a max of sixty to seventy in a set. A booster gold know? with a gold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Something simple like that. Captain America with a star spangled border or something, right? Yeah. Spider Man with a web variant on like webs on cards or something yeah, you know it'd be cool uh batman could also have glow in the dark or something you know lex Luthor could have a kryptonite green variant Ooh. you know something neat superman could have a picture of exploding planet variant or, or i don't know or they just you variant know? like certain cards period there's no then, normal version. then there's no yeah. yeah oh that'd be cool too like no normal version you pull if you pull that character you get like this card that's not let's normal. say we take out the random aspect and we just say that con exclusives going forward oh, get variant cards there we go that'd be kind of neat yeah, instead of looking normal, you put that on the table, and your opponent's like, "Wow, wow, you went to Worlds." You huh? went to Worlds, yeah. Yeah, cool, it's got bro. the big old WW uh, HC <laughs> Worldwide Hero Clicks logo. Can you imagine, uh, like Dark Met Dark Knight's Metal Wonder Woman with like a blood variant because she's got a chainsaw, you know? Like how blood sick splatter, would that be? Yeah. A blood splatter? That'd be so dope. I would love some variants like that. That'd be really cool. So I think. They would just have to be relatively easy to collect. They could still be rare. They could still be whatever. But I think maybe they come with con exclusives or there aren't an insane amount for each figure, like Simeon said, would be yeah. would be right. So, yeah. Like, either you get them all or don't have to worry about, like, yeah, yeah. pulling more boosters to get the uncommon gold version of, yeah, yikes. you know, Cap. Yeah, you know, I, oh, I still haven't pulled black and white, you know, whatever variant yeah. for Batman sucks, you know. That's I, I already have eight, you know green batman variants i want the black and white variant you know <laughs> but they're good trade fodder yeah great great trade fodder so yeah all right next question we got from tyler m if you guys could design a 200 point captain america slash wolverine what are some special powers stat values etc that you would include so i i looked at this previously before we recorded yeah. like a couple days ago and i still didn't bother like thinking in my brain like totally make out a dial or whatever so, judging off of, like, Gamma Clap, uh, Super Spidey, like, the Gamma Clap Hulk and the Super Spidey and, like, even the Iron Man, um, kind of like these, like, new fanboy dials is what we've been calling them, I guess. Yeah. It's a 200-point, like, real good version of this specific character, um, and they don't have, like, a lower point dial, which I think is, like, the main thing. They don't have a lower point dial, so it's, like, you get what you get. And you better enjoy it because yeah. it's a cool effect and it's like an iconic version or it's an iconic like character piece. Like that Hulk, even though he's not like competitive because he's two thirds your build, that Hulk is like so good. 
Yeah. Just insanely He good. is usually good. In a different world where like Hero Clicks was like the normal Hero Clicks game was like six hundred points or something, he would be on every team. Mm. If he yes. only took up one third of your build, like yes. being able to roll two D six <laughs> against every opposing yeah. attack Kinda pretty dumb. pretty solid. Um do you have an idea for Cap? Yeah, for Cap, it came down to he needs to have like an Avengers Assemble trade because when Cap, when he shouts Avengers Assemble, it's go time, right? So either when he uses leadership and succeeds, he can remove, and just no no buff to the leadership roll, still a five or six, right? Because the effects are going to be insane, and he's 200 points. But either you remove an action token from all friendly characters, the Avengers keyword within range and line of fire. Okay. So just a crazy, he'll have like five or six range, right? So like a big leadership, mass leadership, or... Friendly characters with the Avengers keyword have this turn free half speed move. Okay. Like they're just going, you know? So, like, that would be and then like a big Avengers assemble trait. He would probably have like some running shot top dial. I would give him personally invulnerability for defense. I don't, I never liked Cap getting impervious or anything like that. It but I think big stout kind of thing. Uh, I think invuln is, is good for saying shield and plus he can take a hit, whatever. Plus he's not wearing a Hawaiian shirt. So, impervious exactly. Yeah. Sense. Why would he get impervious? He's not wearing a Hawaiian shirt, bro. So, I think like a 19 invulnerability would be really cool to see on Captain America. Yep. Um, and then, like, he would have a special attack power as long as he has running shot, which would be, like, the shield bounce. And I've talked about versions of this, but you either lock his damage value or something, and then when he makes a ranged combat attack, he can draw range and line of fire from an opposing character within range and line of fire or a piece of blocking terrain within line of range and line of fire, right? So he draws to first to that square, and then from that square, he can draw it to anywhere else, right? Yeah. So the shield is bouncing off of that. And then after resolutions, you would deal that character his printed damage value, or you would destroy that piece of terrain. Oh, okay. Um, and that would be the yeah, that's a shield bounce, bounce off the blocking, and then it hits somebody else. And you could try to make something where if he keeps hitting with an attack, he can keep bouncing the shield off. That would be a more text and extra wording. But I think just a yeah. simple bounce off that, hit that guy, it comes back, you know, he makes the attack next turn. That's good enough for a shield bounce power that we still really haven't seen. You know, yeah. I, I still don't think we have a good shield bounce power for Captain America, and that's always been one of my favorite things he does. So I would like to see that in what a character. You, what do you think about like a Thor, like a version of like the Thor Odinson uh, title character ability where you minus one? Obviously, it would just be like free, so it's like once yeah. per turn or something, or it's like once per game. But like, um, where like Thor Odinson could minus one and yank an Asgardian adjacent to him. Like oh yeah, as a free like so like Cap, that would like, also be cool. Does like Avengers Assemble and you can place like up to caps point value worth of characters, characters adjacent to him. So like that'd four fifty point characters. Yeah. That'd be kind of like I would think that'd be also like fair for his leadership or something. Either yeah. succeed on leadership. I or feel like that could be good free. enough for two hundred points. But yeah, I mean, also that's like in modern that's just not like ever feasible. I don't think two hundred points is. It has to be yeah. like something like zany. Well, but like at four hundred points, if you have four 50 point characters that get like zoomed up next to them and then you can do like four attacks with them like follow yeah. up kind of thing that'd be wild and then the dial would have to be you know i think maybe he only does get two abilities maybe he doesn't get any more traits or anything after that there there are other traits you could give him but i think a big leadership one and then a shield bounce one of the two i want the most and then i would like a dial that looks like a very long probably gonna be an 11 click long dial that feels like Captain America is going to be your last man standing. You know, against Thanos, he's the last man standing. Right. He's, you know, whatever. He's in fear itself. He held the line, waiting for the rest of the Avengers to finally show up, you know, and he had basically nothing left. So that's that, to me, is an important trait for Captain America, that no matter what, he gets back up. So either he gets Living Legend, you know, to show that he gets back up even after he's been KO'd, oh, sure. something simple yeah. like that. Living Legend, but, like... The first two times he'd be KO'd. Yeah, oh man, maybe something crazy. I mean, good. they did yeah, that two hundred uh, points. Turtles you know, unplugged. So. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah the, they did that uh, with the, the quarter. Boss, the oh flashing yeah, the flashing. Red. Yeah. Oh geez. Yeah. yeah. So just something like that, or maybe even stop clicks, or some ability down dial where he just starts to just take one damage at a time. You know, if this is the second time he's being attacked this turn, modify his defense by plus one. That could be a cool trait where. You know, for every time after the first Captain America, for each time Captain America gets attacked this turn, modify his kind of his defense plus one for each time he's been attacked this turn. Do you remember Orphan from? Oh, X Force. Did I pull in the X Force? No. Uh, uh, the DC. I think it's. I think the name was Orphan, but oh. from DC, it was the Rebirth set. It was a rare. Oh, that Orphan. Okay, yeah. Got a plus one defense and plus one attack for every. Uh, adjacent opposing characters. So oh, that'd you, be cool. Yeah, if you like threw her into like a group. She'd have There's plus a Wolverine three at that attack too, and plus right? three defense. 
Uh, Isn't maybe. Wanted poster? Doesn't he have that? He does have something like that, yeah. But yeah, like Cap being be outnumbered cool. would make yeah, sense. Yeah, being like, outnumbered. So I know. think basically something like that, and then just has a very, you know, an 11 clicks along dial, 100%. That'd be about it for, for abilities. Uh, Man, a 200-point Wolverine is You should have just seven clicks of just me. regen. <laughs> just, just, just like the Deadpool and the X-Force one. Can regen as free has... or power action regen or regen at no cost. That was so my favorite. Regen technically three times. My favorite time. Wolverine ever is the 130-point brown Wolverine from Days of Future Past. That is a very good that one. That has regen as free if he has two tokens, yeah. but he also just has regen. Um, one of my absolute favorite ones, it might be that same one, is the one where if he, he gets like heal tokens or whatever they're called mm. and then when he would be KO'd uh, you remove like you can remove like two of them it sounds and... like uncanny the yeah. uncanny uncommon I think yeah the uncanny uncommon I'll I'll just look it up real quick because um, in a bizarro or like reverse dial you kind of have to uh, house rule this because otherwise it's pretty broken uh, it, it's not absolutely dis- like Broken. He does a nasty can, last click, doesn't he? He's got like 12 for 4, he Blades, can, Battle Fury. They'll be like KO'd, but uh, it has to be like one shot, which mm-hmm. is wild because uh, I think he's like six clicks long, so you have to do like <laughs> just, seven just pen damage. enough to, yeah. yeah. You either have to do seven pen damage or he just never dies, essentially. Uh, but so his trait is... Um, when he takes damage, place a number of heal tokens equal to half the damage taken on this character card. So, yeah, he gets half of whatever he's dealt. Mm. So, and I'm obviously a round up, so if he's dealt one, he gets one. Uh, give him a free action to remove a heal token to heal one. But on a reverse dial game, you don't do that because he has, when Wolverine would be KO'd by an opponent's attack, you may instead remove three heal tokens if you do turn him to click seven. And it specifically says click seven, not his top click. Oh, so that is good. Yeah. in a reverse dial, it puts him back on, like, technically what his top would be. Um, I played this once and I felt really bad because like I was playing it and like my opponent tried so hard to KO him like the first time and I was like all right I'm gonna remove three and put him back on click seven and then he did it again and I was like all right I'm gonna remove another three and put him back on click seven and he was like wait so can I even kill him and I was like sure if you can deal like as long as they don't as long as they have less than three heal tokens yeah if yeah. if you can deal like eight damage or pulse wave me a bunch um but yeah. But yeah, that um, that is a really solid Wolverine uh, in a I reverse like style a setting. Too. Obviously, we have a what is it? Hobgoblin heals to click one. Yeah, that's insane. Shape change. So like compared to this Wolverine, that Hobgoblin's a better healing factor. Yeah, no, fifty uh, points. Yeah, I think a made so many good Wolverines. Like they just really have Xavier's School. One hundred and fifty points is probably one of the best ones they've ever made. Uh, close second. Honestly, it might be the uh, yeah. The, that one is really good. The Regenesis Man. Wolverine. I, if he was like a little bit cheaper, that Regenesis Wolverine and and sealed, he was disgusting. He's a beast. Because yeah, stop combat reflexes, super senses, traded toughness. When he clears one or more action tokens, you heal him. It's the only thing like stopping this guy from being really crazy is if he had like some sort of like free regen instead of healing one when he clears. Yeah. Um, I will say, I don't know what you think about it, but giving Wolverine Precision Strike, I've never been huge on that because he just really seems like a hack and slash, rip you he, up type guy. So it's it's weird. It depends on the rider, obviously. But Wolverine is technically one of like Marvel's best hand-to-hand combatants. Right. Like Not only sure. has he been alive for X amount of years, but he's like like trained by or trained with the hand and like against yeah. them and like stuff like that. So he like in a comic where he's against ninjas. Uh, he is not only like stupid fast, like speed force almost fast. Okay. Because like also the ninjas are stupid fast. Um, but, like they use a lot of like blur stuff. So like he's like stupid fast. Uh, precision strike. Like he can hold his own. Like go like in hand to hand combat, not even using his claws. He can like block blows and like be very precise and like very methodical oh, about okay. how he fights. Gotcha. But then also like. You go to an X Men comic and it's all like Berserker Barrage. Like, yeah, you know he gets it's mad just, and he goes crazy. Yeah, he rips people up and like that's blood now. Yeah, like as far as like what kind of Wolverine I like, it's you know obviously a mixture of the two because he does both. Yeah, but I think my perfect Wolverine would be something like you know if he was two hundred points, 
He's a 12 click long dial. Oh, okay. And then it would be uh, similar to like Haha ha Joker, where he's got Ooh, a line. Okay. Yeah, he's got a line That's splitting cool. between the six and then one between 12 and one. So between six and seven and 12 and one. And every time he would cross one of those lines, uh, you remove like some token. I don't know. Maybe a six of them. Maybe a seven of them. I don't, I don't know what makes sense for 200 points. Um, but every time he crosses one of those lines, so like no stop clicks or anything like that. But uh, probably like a traded toughness and okay. some clicks he would have combat reflexes, some like super senses, and then um, like that haha ha Joker. And well, similar to that haha ha Joker, he would have like at the beginning of your turn roll a d6, heal that many. Oh and yeah. Then his would have to specifically say he can't heal past one of his lines. Oh his. sure. Whereas Joker's lets him heal or take that damage. Oh. So Wolverine's wouldn't make sense to take that damage. But yeah, I think a, literally like a Wolverine that doesn't have a KO click makes the most sense to yeah, me cool. for 200 points. And then uh, obviously, yeah, like some sprinkled 12 attacks, some some blades, some exploits, some battle fury. Like he runs the whole gamut of what he gets. Um, I think like... <laughs> I think it's too much to say just, like, a full dial of, like, a special speed that's, like, charge flurry. But, like, what does Wolverine do other than that? He's not really the sidesteppy guy. No, no, Even though really. this one has it. Like, he, you know, he really, I mean, you could do, like, hypersonic. Like I said, like, I've read comics where he speed blitzes the hand. And before they can even react, he, like, cuts, like, 12 of them down. Yeah. And it's like. He shouldn't be that. F- he weighs like three hundred. Yeah, he shouldn't be, shouldn't be a fast guy. He has a metal frame. He's like snuck up on people, and I'm like, he would make concrete like creak. Yeah, like Ugh. he would step on concrete, Crack. and it would sound like old wooden flooring. Because yeah, like he is a very dense little yeah. man. Like yeah. it's it's wild. Um, I mean, luckily Colossus is strong, so he can throw him. But that's true. Yeah. Uh, man. Yeah, some of my favorite Wolverine stuff is uh, like the Age of Apocalypse and then also X-Force. I think those are both like great. So Exploit works, Battle Fury works, um, really uh, the Diamond Patch from Rise and Fall. Oh, yeah. Diamond Patch was like a great Wolverine uh, posing characters within like six squares or three squares. You or like whatever that? It was. That's sniffing people out yeah. ability. Yeah. That's like a big thing. Like, <laughs> it is. No, it is. Yeah. Like hey, one of the biggest things he brings to the X-Men is like, hey, Wolverine, did you smell her? Is that Mystique in disguise? And he's like, no, yeah, it's Kate. That's Kate Pride. <laughs> I know that smell from anywhere. And it's like, this is such an intrusive power. Yeah. Like so weird. Super weird, but yeah, like yeah. he's like, Raven, what are you doing here? I can smell your stink from a mile, <laughs> and oh, you're just gosh. like, gosh, you'd have to be so self conscious against the, like around this guy because he's yeah. like, especially like the Hellfire guy. He wears like a bolo tie and like yeah. and tuxedo. He's all fancy and stuff, and then he's like, hey Cyclops, and Cyclops is like, dang dude, I I literally just showered. Like like Stinky. minutes before Stinky I put Scott on this Summers. suit, and he's like, "I could smell your visor sweat from a mile oh, away, gosh, Cyclops." So uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah, Smello Vision Wolverine, where he has improved targeting everything. It's important. Opposing characters can't use shape change uh, oh. or stealth. Well, it wouldn't matter because he has improved targeting. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that would that would make sense. And then like not yeah. really an outwit power, but like a. Uh, like the wizard, uh, where you can be like, "Hey, that character can't use," um, or they they can be like targeted by other stuff. This oh time. yeah, yeah, sure. Like something like that, where he could like point someone out and be yeah, like, the rest "That, the that person you. can't use shape change or stealth this turn." And then your rest of the team like, "Why?" And he's like, "They smell bad. They smell bad. God, they smell bad." Like if you get my drift, they smell bad. Yeah, and they'd be like, "We trust you." Wolverine. All right, let's go. Cool. Yeah. All right, right on. Uh, next question. <laughs> I, th- I feel like I built the worst Wolverine just now. No, he was great. Uh, Bill asked, do you agree with chat GPT's opinion of Dial H for Hero Clicks? So Bill asked chat GPT, why is Dial H for Hero Clicks the best Hero Clicks podcast available? And chat GPT says, well, 
Dial H for Heroclix is considered one of the best Heroclix podcasts because of its informative and entertaining content. The podcast features experienced players who provide insightful tips and trivias about the game. Moreover, it dives into different topics such as tactics, strategies, and game mechanics, making it an excellent resource for beginners and veteran players alike. The hosts also have great chemistry, and discussions are always entertaining and engaging for the listener. Finally, the podcast is well produced, making it easy to listen to and follow the topics discussed. Wow. That's some, pretty, some big praise that's a for, from the review. AI. Yeah, yeah. So, so when the AI takes over, uh, we, we still got the job. We still, yeah, dude. They'll be like, "This is a great Hero Clicks yeah, podcast." Like, Simeon Calder, please continue, continue. You have such like, great chemistry. It would be a please, shame. To please, kill Chat you. GBT. It's been thirty-eight hours. Can we just go to? Please continue talking about Hero Clicks podcast. And podcast. Continue. This is well produced. And it's easy to listen to and follow the topics. Please. We love your insightful tips and trivias. Please continue. I would say, although really, ChatGPT is not like totally wrong. And this isn't me just blowing smoke, you know, just or blowing ourselves up. But like a lot of those things are comments our comments gotten. people yeah. have given us i was yeah. gonna say did it literally just like read like did it the, read some of the our views ratings or yeah, something yeah the re- i think reviews? so because i mean other than um uh no, i have heard people say that like veteran players and stuff but like other than like you know like the uh, competitive side like i think everything it didn't really say competitive but like uh we did we do talk about tactics and strategies we do occasionally. yeah we talk Not about a ton, game mechanics a little bit uh, we are an excellent resource for beginners. Maybe the only resource for beginners. Uh, mm. Uh, mm. Mm. Uh, great chemistry. Uh, we do. Um, yeah, we do. Uh, what, what clicks busters? There's chemistry. Uh, there's some chemistry intro. there. Yeah. yeah, there is. Yeah, they do like little boiling uh, Euler flats yeah. or whatever those are yeah. called. Yeah. Yeah, so we do some chemistry, and uh, we def- we definitely engaged the listener. We just engaged Grant. We did. Yeah, he's engaged now. Oh God, not like that. <laughs> no, oh, is he? Is he not? I thought he was in the mood. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh, he's Does not that out just of instantly camp? happen? Okay. <laughs> Does that? <laughs> he's not engaged yet. He's yeah, not out of boot camp. The okay. wait. Well, he's out of basic. He's done with basic. Oh, yeah. Well, he should be then. He's still in high school. Oh wow. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Is that not legal? <laughs> I don't... I mean, I don't know. I No, it's zero clue. But thank you. Thank you, ChatGPT, for such a good review. If Bill wants to copy and paste that review uh, and then leave it on our iTunes, or if you, listener, yeah. want to leave us a review on iTunes, Podbean, or Spotify, wherever you're listening to this podcast, please do. It would mean a lot. But... If you're going to take any amount of time out of your day to do anything, consider taking some time out of your day to donate to the International Player Foundation, the IPF. We are using all the money, all the funds to get international players, more international players, to Heroclix Worlds this year. We already have one player in mind, and we are getting submissions now for other people that are international that would like to come to Worlds. And after viewing a few of them, and I can't wait to share them with you, the listener, but it made me want to like, wow, I want to get this guy to Worlds like 100% because, oh my gosh, what a great video, what a well-produced video. I want to get more international players to Worlds because that was also some of the most fun I had at Worlds. Uh, was talking to a ton of people that were internationally. Uh, a lot of people from Mexico, of course, um, Andrea from Italy and everything. But we have here is all over the world. And it really is such a shame that it's purely Canada and Mexico that make the biggest showings in a world tournament. Yeah. Um, and I was excited by the amount of Spanish players we had there, but Mexican players that were at Worlds. But now I just want to see even more cultures and people from all around the world playing in Worlds because, man, it was incredible. Especially after seeing these guys' passion for hero clicks, it is such a shame it costs so much to get over here. So, yeah, yeah uh, please heavily consider donating to the IPF. I know I've already donated a bunch um, and donating prizing and stuff for the International Player Tournament. So, if you don't just want to do a straight up donation, which if you don't want to do the tournament and you don't have time to do anything else, a straight up donation would be so awesome, and we would yeah. super appreciate and, and there's love no, you for it. There's no minimum. Um, no, literally like anything that you can or are willing to give. If you just want to toss a buck that way, and, that's totally fine. Uh, we we are not a non for profit yet. We're in the process of that still. Uh, so next year for sure. But um, we are completely transparent on all the like all the money that's come in. Uh, once they send it to like my PayPal. Once, like, the drive is over, I'll share that, like, exact amount, 
and then the cost for like the plight the flights and stuff the flights and plights hopefully not a plight hopefully geez, uh, no. yeah hopefully just flights uh but no if also if you know a international player or happen to be one or you just like think of anybody that this would apply to um have them send in a video submission because you know there's there's plenty of room and of course like going forward we're hoping to do this every year i think at this point we're locked in for like at least one more year of this unless like something terrible happens but i don't know what that would be yeah but uh yeah if you know anybody definitely like let them know and uh if you can think of anyone if you're like oh yeah like i've traded with this guy he should definitely get to worlds so like have him make a video send it to our way and uh we'll do like a community vote at some point so yeah uh, the only thing that I have left to say is I opened my Spider-Man Beyond Amazing. Have you? Maybe you should uh, check out Cool Stuff Inc., where they have the latest HeroClix singles, including Spider-Man Beyond Amazing, and they still have some sealed products. So check them out. Use code DIAL5 and uh, get some cool stuff. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Zero clicks. help. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred instant deadpan humor. Over okay, yeah, six people scary. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was a you and a You absolute fools. It's gonna be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because that's, I'm gonna make your looks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow! Wow! Wow!